I've called it, if it can be destroyed by the truth, it should be. How's that for a statement? If it just can be destroyed by the truth, it should be. And the reason why I've got this topic is we live in the dumbest age in almost in human history. All around the world, cultures, creeds, religions, people are being taught so many stupid things, being shown so many fallacies, and so many people believe them as the truth and just fall in. And you think, how dumb can humanity get? People can't define what a, w a woman is anymore, and yet they can be the minister of women in a government. They can't even define what a woman is, and yet they can be minister for women. And that's only one example. It just, the list just goes on. I'm sure you all know, you've all seen what's happened between COVID and now, it's just almost like peak stupidity has run rampant through the whole world with all forms of logic and truth and these things just being thrown out the window. So what people see and deal with is actually a lack of integrity. They're being taught to believe something because it seems right to do that. It feels good to be in that position, but it's not truthful. Nothing else in life works that way. If you go and buy a house, you want a mortgage with a signature and security. You don't want someone who says, oh, you pay me the money and you own it. Oh, I just feel so good about that. Oh, I believe them. They look honest. None of us do it that way. And yet why is it when something as important as life and death, your life, whether you survive when Jesus Christ returns or whether you survive when you pass on from this world, you will hand that over to someone who speaks in loops and not bat, bat an eyelid and yet you won't buy a TV without some sort of insurance and receipt to prove you bought it so you can claim on a warranty if something goes wrong. Can you see how foolish humanity is becoming? And this is all around us. This is what we, they call it the new normal. And these things actually were warned about in the Bible, particularly in that international scene. Uh, in Isaiah, we were warned that the West, which is all the descendants of Abraham, which is another talk, another day, I'm not going to explain it today, that these Western nations would get to the point where difficulty would come upon them collectively. And that's where we're at now. Isaiah 3 verse 12 is my reference point for this. And the things I'm reading today, they're off a set of notes. The notes will be available after the meeting if you want to take a copy. They're also available online. They're permanently online. Anything we do and say here goes up online and it's, able, it's uh, available as a resource or something you can go back to in the future should you need to. <clears throat> Isaiah 3 verse 12. He says here, As for my people, predicting forward to the time when all these things were fulfilled and the promises of Abraham were dispersed over three, four hundred years where the world started receiving full volumes of Bibles where Christianity had gone in the world and so much of the benefits of God's word had brought and the blessing to the nations with most of the modern technology, most of the modern forms of engineering and building and just about everything which is good for humanity came out of the development of these nations and people who based their legal structure and their social structure of their developing countries over a couple of hundred years were all based on the Ten Commandments. And that's why they worked. They didn't have to be religious. The commandments themselves bring forward a form of social life and living which is the safest and most protective there is. And the nations were built on these things. Even though many of the leaders weren't necessarily honouring the commandments, the system and the legal system was built on fairness for all, which is a step outside of nearly every other uh, political realm that we might come across. Now he says here in Isaiah 3, 12, as for my people, children are their oppressors. The word children here doesn't mean little kids. It just simply means adults who don't have much more common sense than children and meaning they're unskilled in the experience of life. They're immature. So you're gonna have people who really don't know how life is are gonna start oppressing them and women will rule over them. Now, I'm not going to debate today the concept of women and men. There's plenty of things in the Bible when we go to the roles of men and women in the church, which we could go through. Again, this won't be today. 
But I'd like to give you an observable point that if God made a choice of what men's roles were and women's roles were in life, he, he having created us, if you're going to get angry and call someone a sexist, then God's a sexist because he's the one who made the rules, not me. Think about that for a moment. If you believe all this is sexist and all out the window and all no good, then what you're saying is God who designed it the way he did, he is the one who was in the wrong. It's not a modern trend, but today everyone's a victim. Everyone's going to blame someone. And uh, as was said uh, a little while back, um, if you find fault in someone else and you become a victim, you're able to dispose of your responsibility because you're a victim rather than face the reality that maybe you should be making a better choice. All the victims of this world love it because they then have an excuse to be a failure because why? They're oppressed by so many evil things. And that's where this world goes. Now, Jesus Christ has set us free, but the point I'm making here at the moment is that God has already laid down how the bulk of these nations who would bless would fail. Immature, unwise, untrained, unskilled leadership and the fact that the natural role of men, and I'm talking about people with godly direction, not some of the oppressive dictators we've seen through time, but people who would just work on the basics of God's rules that um, he's taken them away. As a result, we get a lot of people filling the roles that aren't up to the job. And we're now watching the national failure of the West basically round in every country all around the world. They're filling up all the nations with people from other lands, immigrants. Not that there's anything wrong, wrong with helping people who are in distress, but what it's doing is it's aimed to break down the cohesion and the society which has got its strength from being built on the Ten Commandments. And we're just weakening ourselves to a point where we can't succeed anymore. And this is what the Lord said. Look, there's a whole talk in this. I don't want to go into it. Today I've got another topic. <coughs> so God's way, and this is the point I want to make because we're going to talk about this to a large extent, God's way is always built on truth. And even more so, it's built on provable truth. In other words, God offers signs and wonders and evidence, not theory and, and not pretense. And that's a good thing to know. Now, I'm going to go in just a little bit further. Proverbs 29, 12, you can turn there. But the Bible warns us that this failing of the nations, this failing where unskilled people and the wrong type of leadership would be promoted. This has moved into the religious circles of the world to an equally polluted and corrupted, what could have been lines of learning. A lot of churches came out of their ignorance. The Bibles taught them things and they learned this. And we read historically there was great revivals with people receiving the Spirit, speaking in tongues, signs, miracles, wonders. And there's a whole lot of references in our more modern history in the last hundred years of these things happening all around the world. Now, our church history is the same. We're, we're in many countries around the world today. There's almost a new country with spirit-filled people in it every week. At the moment, it's a bit hard to keep up. But the general rule is that they will corrupt themselves because they follow the political pathway. They need to be seen to be doing what's right. So to attract people, they've got to be in the camp of seeming. There's another word for that, it's called wokeness, which is just a term being thrown around for those who don't understand. Wokeness means that you move away from principles that work into something that makes you feel good. And it's the feeling good's the important thing, not actually being good or doing good. It's the feeling, it's the vibe. And that's become the problem today. So if we consider this, Proverbs 29.12 he speaks here about leadership. He said, if the ruler hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. If the leaders of country believe the lies that are being peddled around now, then the whole network of the government system, the whole network of the bureaucracy will all be full of people who lie because that's what they've got. Now, this is God's words, not mine. If you're going to move the culture of your society into areas, you've got bad leadership, they believe lies, everything's about seeming and feeling good, then the whole network set up which controls us, 
controls our social service, controls all our medicines, controls our military, controls all the expenditure for the nation, controls the banking system, controls the commerce centres of the, the country. If the government is full of people who don't tell the truth, they're going to do the same thing and be the same thing. That's where we are. No surprise. Now, the problem is a lot of the beliefs out today, you can prove them wrong immediately. You can just simply say, here is the truth on that matter, but they don't want to listen. Because if you give people the truth, they have to change their behaviour. They don't want to move away from feeling good. It's a lot easier to say something nice than it is to do something nice. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot more effective, and you, you look better because you get instant gratification. Oh yes, I agree with that point of view 100%. Oh, you're one of the crowd. Welcome in, brother. Welcome in, sister. But if I say, please explain why you follow that point of view, um, it's because they do it. They've told me it's good, so it must be good. Now, where we've gone well as a church is that we challenge everything that feels good with Scripture and what God does, which is good. And this is what our church has been built on. Our fellowship has been built on signs, miracles and wonders. Our church is built on what happened in Acts 2, where the first person, uh, or the first group of people, who received God's salvation through the anointing of the Spirit, they all spoke in tongues. And the scene was set scripturally then that that would be the pathway for all churches up until the return of Jesus Christ. That's all true churches. And we're able to speak to people and deal with false religion and destroy the tenets of their faith simply because they're not the truth. The truth can't be destroyed. It's only evil can be destroyed. And we're well versed as a group of people at undoing religious beliefs. Many people here were Catholics in the past, or this or that, or atheists or whatever. We were able to destroy those false beliefs with the truth. How did that happen? It wasn't a debate. God came in and filled people with the Spirit. And people who are unbelievers, all of a sudden they're speaking in tongues and they know in themselves that God is true. It's not about me convincing you you received the Spirit. God does it to you and for you. You are able to tell me what God has done and I can then take you further with what the scriptures tell you of the next steps. This is how our God works. But if I stood here and said, all we've got to do is give your heart to the Lord. Oh yes, speaking in tongues can come and healing can come. But you're actually saved when you give your heart to the Lord. That is not a Bible truth. So that's a very clever way of discounting Bible truth and selling out with the lie. And when your church is filled with people who only need to give their heart to the Lord, in other words, the rulers, the leaders, um, if they hearken to lies, then the rest of the church will be full of liars. It's just simply the pathway. And this is not a judgment, it's an observation of reality, which the Lord's trying to share with us. Now, I'll give you a simple illustration without being political. We've heard so much about global warming of recent times, have we not? Okay, so I'll just give you a little reality. China today puts out as much CO2 in two weeks as what Australia puts out in the whole year. Now, that's a reality. China in two weeks puts out as much carbon dioxide as what we do in the whole year. If we shut Australia down altogether, what difference would that make to the CO2 output in the world? Well, it's only 0.001% effective change in the temperature. So all the pain and suffering we're going through is for a measure that can't be measured. Now, to make it even worse than this, and I've got a reference here, you can go onto the internet, actually to the left side of politics where they've got this stuff equally laid down so it's not a political statement it's actually factual and guess what 2022 China is building two new coal-fired power stations every week for the whole year this is fact provable by every side of politics because they all have it there so 
we close Australia down, everyone goes back to caves in the Stone Age, and the reality is we make zero improvement in the world's weather whatsoever because it's impossible when they're putting more out, not less. Then we, I'm not even going to go into the other debates. I'm just simply giving you some facts which can't be debated. But what happens, you give people facts and they totally swipe it aside and go to another question because they don't want to answer the question. Now, this is where it can be destroyed by the truth. It should be destroyed. Well, I can tell you now that if we shut all of Australia down, which we haven't done, we've only shut down a small portion, but look at the cost to our society with everything going up in price, electricity bills tripling in some places, okay, for what gain have we got? Zero. Absolutely zero gain. It's not going to alter anything. Even if it could alter every, anything, then it's not going to alter anything. Why? because there's more CO2 going into the atmosphere now than ever was. And if we shut down altogether, within two weeks, China will put it out again, and now they're going to put it out again with another 104 power stations. Can you see the argument is absolutely foolish and wrong? I can destroy this argument with the truth, but there again, people don't want to hear because there's a feel-good vibe to it. Oh, we're saving the planet. We feel good. Where's the oh no, we don't need evidence. We we've been told. We read it. We heard it on the TV. Well, do we treat religion the same way? Yes, we do. So much of the Western world treats religion the same way. He's such a nice man. He wouldn't lie to us. I believe him. God's a God of love. Of course he will. And we get all these things and God's going, I don't work that way. I actually give you proof. You don't have to worry about feeling good. I'll give you proof and evidence. But see, as soon as you talk that, people don't want to hear. Let me tell you, the way of the world will not end well. The Bible's already told us because this is leading into the end of the age. And you think global warming is real or not, it doesn't worry me. I don't care what you believe because the reality is happening regardless of whether you're right or wrong. Does that make a point? It doesn't matter what you believe, the reality of the climate will be whatever its reality is. All we're trying to do is discover the cause of it. Now we can already disprove a lot of things, but that's, see, that's not my message. We have a better message. Our message is not about global warming. Our message is not about COVID. Our message is not about any of the talking points of this world because they're all irrelevant because this world is going to be destroyed in a moment of time in the near future. Our talking point is what God can do for you. Amen? That's our talking point. Our talking points are salvation with signs and miracles and wonders. Now, if we get sidetracked if we find it easier to talk about global warming or this or that than we do about our salvation and the message of forgiveness, then we're no better than the people in the world. If our topic of conversation with people is around every conspiracy, whether it's right or wrong, rather than what God can do in their life, we're no better than worldly people. We're actually wasting what's been granted to us. That's not good. We've fallen for the lie. We get sucked in with what seems important in the moment, and that's not good for us. Doesn't mean we can't have cares. Doesn't mean we can't be troubled by pollution. Doesn't mean we can't be troubled by any of the things that are wrong in the world. We can have ethical and moral obs observations and awarenesses, but our role's not that. We can't fix any of it. What we can do is deliver people out of it. Amen. That's our role, to deliver people. Let's go to the first lie, where it came from. We'll go to Genesis 3, verse 4. Now, this is in the Bible. I'm sure it's not the first lie, but it's the first recorded lie in history. The first lie was when she said to Adam, do I look fat in this? And you know what her, his answer was? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Anyway, Genesis 3, 4. The serpent said unto the woman, 
you shall not surely die. Then he played the victim card. Do you realize that you're a victim? Do you realize that God has lied to you? He's held back from you. You could have all the power of the heavenly throne. You could be able to control the destiny of the planet if you wanted. But he's cheated you out of it. Now, this is basically what was said. He says, for God does know lie in the day that you eat thereof lie then your eyes shall be opened lie and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil lie they ate the fruit and what happened they knew they were going to die and that's where it went they knew they'd breached things which had never been touched now the reason I'm reading this is that the terminology here was trying to make her feel good, trying to seem. Do you not realise that God knows these things are true? He knows that he, he's got control over you. This was how Satan works. So they made a choice based on feeling. They made a choice based on seeming. They were the first woke couple in the world. Think about it. They turned the woke corner. And there they were. So he convinced her she was a victim and he could save her. Our politicians today say, we're going to be fried, the world, the, pop, the oceans are going to rise up. And I thought, well, that's okay. I've got any man property in Victoria, we could be seafront. Think about it, we could be seafront. Imagine how much more our property would be worth. But they don't want you talking about it. It's so interesting. So many of these politicians are buying beachfront homes anyway. What does that tell you? Oh, yes, lots of seeming. And I'm not having go at the politicians because every side of politics, if they ignore God's promises and God's will for the destiny of the people they care for and the planet and the lives of those who are yet to come into this country, then they're failing. That's the end of the job. They're failing. Their role is to teach the truth. Maybe not religiously, but turn what happens in politics into a truthful environment where benefit can flow. It doesn't happen. You know it, I know it. So our politicians tell us that by cutting back on this, paying power prices, car prices are going to come down, power prices are going to come down, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, promise, 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 lie, lie, lie. What's happened? Everything's going up. Who was surprised? I'm not. We've seen this all before. Remember the year 2K bug was going to come? Everyone's computer was going to crash. We're all going to die. Everything would end. Then well, I could go through a dozen of them, but that's not the point. The point is, if you're going to be destroyed by the truth, it should be. A lot of what the whole world is being guided into now can be destroyed by the truth. But when the point I made about China isn't there to prove a point. It simply is, that is the truth. How do you get around it? You don't. You don't answer the question, you just move to another topic. You deflect. That's how politics works. People deflect. That's how people in power operate. They deflect. They deflect from the truth. If you want to put a question to myself or people here in the church, anything about religion which we have an answer to, then we will tell you the truth. And sometimes the truth isn't pleasant, but we will still be honest with you because that's what we do. And that's what we've always done. And that's what we always will do. So, this world convinces us they're saving us. The planet's going to heat up. We're all going to die. We're all going to perish, flooded. There'll be, everyone will starve to death, and yet we have more grain growing in the world than any time in history. It seems that CO2 is good for plant life. Isn't that amazing? It's actually plant food. And we're so surprised that plant food helps plants grow. The planet is greener now than it was 30 years ago, collectively. Where do you hear this? Where are you being told it's good? You won't, because that's not the feel-good meme. It's not about that, it's about something else. In the end, it's all about turning their hearts into they want. What did Satan say to Adam and Eve about God, what did they say it for? What did he say it for? He wanted to control them. He didn't want God to have that control. 
He wanted to be their boss. Scripture talks about that. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. You might like to turn there. Lots of good things. Okay, this scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, 13. He says, referring to people who actually make statements and won't back them up. Feel good, say good, whatever. He said, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. God hasn't done it. They're self-appointed. God never said to Satan he had any authority over Adam and Eve. He self-appointed himself. He stepped in and pretended to have an authority which he never had. Our leaders today step in and pretend to have knowledge and answers which they don't have. The world of religion talks about answers they can't produce, beliefs that don't work, and total failure when it's compared with scriptural references. Everyone accepts it, by those smart enough to come out. Verse 14, and he said, and no marvel, no marvel that this is happening because he now refers to Satan as Satan began in the Garden of Eden and continued onward, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's become the messenger of brightness and goodness. How? By his lies. Not because he can, he's a liar. And if the if it can be destroyed by the truth, it should be. The day you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit you speak in tongues and you destroy the lies religiously of this world. The salvation message when proven, as we have, you destroy all false religion. You destroy every lie, every deceit, every complication with the simplicity of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But he's saying here, well, religious leaders, they're going to talk big, but to you they might seem like they're messengers of God. Angels of light is the word used here. In verse 15 he says, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now let's go back in our mind and consider Proverbs we read earlier. If a ruler hearkens to lies, Satan has become the ruler of darkness, set himself up as a minister of light, an angel of light, it would be no surprise, as it says here, that all his servants are wicked. So everyone who has a story or a conversion or a religious approach which is outside of God's is a wicked servant, according to God, built on lies. It's a pretty fearful thing to be in because there's a lot of genuine people get drawn in to feeling good. Yet people put roadblocks across the road to stop these horrible four-wheel drives who are polluting and ruining the planet. Interestingly, this is again just for your information, in the last year or two, They've discovered another um, 10 or 15,000 undersea volcanoes they didn't know existed. Their CO2 output alone would already be double the total pollution man puts out on the planet. They're already in existence, but they didn't count them in the figures because they didn't know they are there. So now they have to rejig the whole thing and make it work again. Now, they won't talk to you about that because they don't want you to know that See, they've got a theme. Religion's got a theme. And this is what I want to focus on. Satan does not want you to have power. Why? Because if you've got power, he doesn't. If you disempower him, he is without force in you. When Jesus died, he thought he had the victory. Son of God is dead. The man working the miracles, he's gone. And it was almost like, oh, 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 we've, we've done it, guys, thanks. The chief priests who were responsible for the welfare of the people, the religious welfare, they were happy to see him dead. Why? This guy was healing the sick in their midst. He was feeding the hungry people. He was showing them God's love. He was teaching them all about God in a way they'd never heard before, which was their role. 
and they murdered him. Why? Because he interrupted their lies. They had to reveal in themselves that they loved the lie more than the truth. He showed them up for what they were. In the temple, when he died, the curtain which separated the holy place from the balance, it was torn in half by God from the top to the bottom, top from the bottom because it couldn't have been by human effort, torn the wrong way for humans, but there again it needed 60 people to carry the thing. No human would have been strong enough to tear it. In fact, the 60 people needed to carry it couldn't have torn it if they wanted to. But God still made a mockery of man's logic, tore it from the top to the bottom. You know what they did? They sewed it back together. They sewed it back together. Yep, let's keep the lie going. Um, God's shown me wrong. And what do our politics of today do? You prove they're liars, they just sew it back together and find another lie that does the same thing. And this is what religion's doing. But you know the worst thing in the world? This is what we do when we're out of sorts with the Lord. We convince ourselves that we're a victim. The pastor's nasty. The house leader's nasty. The church is no good. The people in it aren't loving. There's a whole lot of things we could say and do. They're just sewing the curtain back together in their, their life. It's a lie. We can have anyone come into this building and receive the Holy Spirit. Anyone in this city or who wants to come here can have eternal life because we will tell them truthful things, we will pray with them and God will answer with his sign which cannot be uh, imitated nor copied by any power that you and I might have or for that matter any human has. God blesses them with the blessing of the Bible. That's what we all have when we share our salvation message. Sometimes you think you're inferior. Sometimes you think you're not good enough. Sometimes you feel that you're not up to the task. But I can tell you that the knowledge of good and evil, the knowledge of how to defeat that lie that was set in them about being your own boss and your own choice, which Adam and Eve, the first lie ever told, we can destroy it with the truth. Amen? We can destroy that lie. I am here because I received the Holy Spirit, not because I chose a church full of nice people. But by the way, we do have a church full of nice people. Outside of one or two in the back row. We have a church full of people who know the truth and are in all different stages of development trying to learn how to be the people that God wanted them to be right from the beginning. This is our calling. We can destroy the truth in a moment, but where do they want it? I'll just sew the curtain back up again. That's what they've always done. Now, not only were they happy to murder Jesus, they sewed the curtain up. Then it came and they said, oh, Jesus is risen. Uh-oh. How are we going to deal with this? So they conferred together. These same people who are in charge of our welfare, the people who God wanted to be taught salvation and mercy and deal with their sins and give them a better life to bring prosperity and the joy of creation into their lives, they got together and they schemed. How can we defeat this? He's actually rose from the, risen from the dead. What can we do? So they agreed to lie. Let's say his disciples come and ran off with the body. Let's tell everyone. He didn't raise from the dead. That's all a lie. It's fabricated. His disciples come and run off with the body. And if the truth actually comes out and it gets to the leader, to, to the boss, the prime minister, we will bribe people so that it won't matter. So, in other words, they knew that they could bribe and they had power over the political leaders of the day. Now, the guards were given, Bible term, big money to remain silent and to lie. Now, interestingly, which I probably find the most powerful giveaway sentence in the Bible in this story, is where it says, referring back to that time, historically, and the sayings of that is still with us today. 
the lie we paid for, the lie we did, is still being spoken in the marketplace today. And so we are here today. The lies of you don't need the Holy Spirit, you don't need the anointing, you don't see the, you don't need the signs, you only need to feel good. You only need to make a decision for Christ. You only need whatever, 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 those lies are still in the marketplace today. You know how Jesus Christ broke through the lies of the leaders and the false prophets, the Sadducees, the Pharisees? His people got filled with the Spirit and they circumvented all the lies by doing signs, miracles and wonders. That's how it happened. You and I are doing exactly the same thing today. We destroy the lies and reveal the truth. But it's only for those who want to believe the truth. It's only for those who are happy to move forward in their walk in the Lord. Matthew 15, 8. To serve God, you've got to have an honest heart. To receive the Holy Spirit, you've got to have an honest heart at the time of seeking. A lot of people feel unworthy, and that's not a bad thing, because I'll express that all of us aren't worthy. Not one person here who's ever received the Holy Spirit is worthy. The Holy Spirit isn't given to you because you're worthy, it's given to you because you're humble and honest. And you might not know what honesty and humility are in the big picture, but you know enough that when the Lord says, look, this is how I'm going to bless these nations, I'm going to ask them to repent, which simply means stop in your tracks, stop in your tracks, listen to me for a moment and think about what I've got to say. Get baptised in water. And when you're baptised in water, that's your act of humility and repentance to me. That's your sign. That's why it's called the baptism of repentance. And that's mentioned three or four times in the New Testament. So it's not my term, it's Bible term. Jesus said, I will fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. John the Baptist, the greatest prophet on earth, said this is what happened. So the message we have as a church to this world today it's exactly the same one that happened on the day of Pentecost. God backed it with signs, miracles and wonders, and he destroyed what was the religious falsities of the day because his power was greater than their truth. We've got people today who say, I don't care what the evidence is, I believe what I believe. There are actually people who believe that the world is flat. I, I, I often wonder, I, I think these people must be sort of joking a bit. And I sort of think the only person who would believe the world is flat probably has a flat head. Because there's just so much evidence the other way. But I tell you something, we have more evidence that God's alive than there is evidence that the world's flat. And people still mock us. People still don't want to know. People still don't want to listen. We've got family members who don't want to even hear. I've been in the Lord over 50 years. I've got family members who know every step of my life and they're jealous of the quality of our life. They love all the friends we have and they're just jealous that they don't have that network. But you talk to them and they don't want to take a step to the Lord. Why? Why don't they want to do what the Lord says? Because in them there's something which won't allow them and it's lack of humility. It doesn't matter what their belief structure is, they're just not humble. You humble yourself, and my mother proved that point, and so did my next brother down. I'm the oldest of uh, four. My mother took my second brother. He's number two in the line. We, um, it's a bit of a test me. I know some of you heard it, but it amplifies destroying a lie with the truth. I took them to a meeting years ago. Years ago, in the 80s, I took them to a meeting. Might have been the 70s, I can't remember. Probably early 80s. I took them to a meeting... And they didn't say anything to me, but my brother tells me somewhere between 15 and 20 years later, they knew at the very beginning that what I'd said and what they saw was the truth. They knew it. They couldn't argue with it. But they spent the next 15, 20 years in denial till they got to the point where they were so angry with me because every year I used to go down there, we'd head off to the convention, I'd stay with them, you know, cheap accommodation, catching up with family, stay with them and that. And every year we'd debate and argue scripture, testimonies. We'd had miracles, signs, wonders all for our life. They knew that our kids had been healed, this had happened. 
That had happened. They knew all that, but they were in denial. Now, one year, the last year I went down there before they went to a meeting, I made my mind up I didn't want to offend them or upset them. So I simply didn't talk to them about what God was doing. I just spoke about home things. Now, I came home. We're only down there three days. I came home and they were so angry. How dare I not offend them with the truth? Now, in their vernacular, they got the snots with me. They got angry. How dare I not witness to them? Does he think somehow we're not worth being saved even though we don't believe in it? This is this controversy which happens between spiritual and natural. This is a true story. I'm not embellishing this. This is how... I, I could say a lot more, which would sound embellishing, but my brother, who's spirit-filled and walking in the Lord now, he could come and add a lot more than I'm saying. And we've spoken about it. We laugh about it. But he said, they got the snots. How dare I not witness to them? So a couple of weeks after we'd left, I'd left, they took themselves off to a meeting just to get even with me for not daring to tell them about the truth of salvation. They got even. In fact, they did such a good job of getting even, they both received the Holy Spirit. So we had the most comical phone call that evening from my mother, who's telling me in a very drawn-out way, drawing me in, drawing me in, drawing me in, about finally she got to the point, and guess what, Brad? You, uh, I, and your brother went to your church. I got baptised. And guess what? I received the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues. It was almost like, no, 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 I'm proving me wrong, but I'm feeling good because you're really stupid. This is sort of this confusion that's happening in their head. So I'm getting this, and also, guess what, Brad? Your brother got baptised. And he received all his... Ba- he speaks in tongues too, you know. <laughs> it's like they've known it all their life, and now they're telling me something I never knew. This, and it was such a wonderful revelation because in them is the old and the new coming to terms with each other. And this happens to all of us when we make a choice to walk in the Lord. There's a period of time where everything which is not the truth is destroyed and everything which is the truth becomes our reality. We're here. Don't ever be persuaded differently. Now, as it turned out, on that day, after mum and my brother finished their bragging and the putting me down, and look, I loved it. It's the best put down I've ever had in my life. They can insult me any time they like with that type of news. I then said, well, guess what, mum? Because on the same day, Laura, my middle daughter, received the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And not only that, part two was, and Julie, my young daughter, not to be outdone by her older sister, went up behind the curtain, had prayer and received the Holy Spirit and got baptised too. So I had mum and dad, uh, sorry, mum and brother going, na, 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 na. I was able to go, na, 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 back. But we're all on the same page. That, that is remarkable. Why? Because the truth destroyed the garbage. You and I have this truth. Don't ever underestimate the power that's in you to do good, to say good, and bring good about. Don't ever underestimate just the simplicity of telling a family friend. You're wrong. There's a better way than that. You don't have to single out all their failings. Just tell them there's a better way than what you're doing, which will give you a better result. We all want better results. We're into the self-help age where we're all looking for good. Amen? In conclusion, in conclusion, we destroy the lies with truth. We are not angels of light in pretense. We are angels of light in reality. God has transformed sinners of the world into angels of light. We are them. You might not see it in yourself. You might not even get a reaction. You probably think, well, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried for this. It doesn't matter how long you try for. There are people who come the first day. There are people who will come the last day. And there are people who will never come. That's not our choice. We are simply reflecting the light of God where we can shine it. Amen? Amen. We'll leave it there.